What's happening, YouTube? Cowboy here, and we are back with another Lords of the Fallen boss strategy showcase. This time around, taking a look at the Lost Brothers. Now, before you start this fight, if you're concerned or you know you have any any worries at all, I would suggest grabbing a lightning resistance shard and fire resistance shard and toggling a favorite to those so you can use them as needed. This fight involves two enemies, one being lightning and the other obviously being fire. Now, there are a couple things to look out for. The fight will start with both of them down initially, but as time on the fight progresses, one of the brothers will flip up onto the ceiling and you'll only fight one. And then after you know, a certain amount of time, the one you're fighting jumps up on the ceiling and the other one comes down. Now between these swaps with the brothers, usually there is a small period, about 15 seconds, where you have to fight them both at the same time. It's obviously better to play defensive there. As you can see right now, the lost brother, the fire one, is up there. Can't target him, he won't come down. So, we're up against the lightning. Now, they all have very basic attacks. The light one, you can see, is kind of like a 1-2 melee hit. The fire one only seems to swing once with melee. Uh, aside from that, the lightning one does have that ranged attack right there that you saw. And do keep your eye out for that. It can go straight through pillars and hit you. So, it's important to note, it's one of the few attacks in the game that has, like, uh, you know, just penetration through objects. So, you can't just hide behind pillars to heal up. With, well, I mean, you can, but obviously that will go through pillars and hit you, so keep that in mind. Uh, aside from that, he will occasionally jump up in the air and do a lightning slam, which isn't really that bad to deal with, but it's something to be aware of nonetheless. So, you can see when they both come down, they each do their slam. He does his lightning slam, which he's doing right now. He also does it every time he leaps after you, and the fire one's down. So, when the lightning one goes back up, I'll end up being in a one-on-one -on -one against the fire guy. And you can see the lightning one has leapt back up, and now it's just me and fire. Now, fire doesn't have a leap after you, but he has this kind of bounding thing he does, which you can see will do a fiery AoE explosion around him. Additionally, he'll do a frontal cone AoE attack, which is right here. And aside from that, this fight's really not that bad. Like, I probably could have been done by now, but I wanted to go through the different attacks so you guys can see what they had. One thing I think that helps greatly Obviously, I have a flawless fire rune in both my legs and in my gauntlets. And it's not necessarily just for this fight, but in general, I felt that when it came to socketing elementals, that there were more enemies with fire than anything else, so I felt I was going to get the best benefit out of that. Now, the best strategy to complete this fight is going to be to work them both down during the respective one-on-one -on -one phases, and then, when they're both nice and low, kill them both off at the same time. So he's going to jump up, make sure to get away since they're both going to jump down. And the reason I'm saying this is basically whichever one you kill first, the other one will gain an ability that one had. So, for example, if I were to kill the fire guy first, after killing the fire guy, the lightning one will have the fire breath. If I were to kill the lightning guy first, the fire guy will get the lightning AoE explosion, like the jump slam. So, because of this... Like I said, we're going to work them both down. Fire's pretty low. We're going to get the lightning one nice and low here. And after we work him down, we'll then basically kill him and the fire at the same time. Now you can see the regular attacks aren't that bad. In general, you're going to want to watch out for the elemental attacks. That's where the damage comes from against these guys. And with that in mind, you know, with a medium or lightweight armor, which has higher elemental resistance, it, those might not even be that bad, but, you know, as the trade-off, the melee attacks might be hitting harder, so... Obviously, as you can see, I'm not really that concerned with being overly defensive at all. I'm just kind of, you know, attacking whenever I have an opening against these guys, and, and that's pretty much it. So, right here, I am going to try and get some more damage into the lightning one before he goes away. I want him nice and low for the next time they both come down, because I plan on killing the lightning one first. And he should be good where he's at. Now, the last thing I want to touch on before we wrap up this fight is loot. Basically, depending on which Lost Brother you kill last, that will determine what you're going to get. Now, I've the new game playthrough, I ended up killing the Fire Guy first and then the Lightning one last, so I'm not sure what the Fire Guy is going to give me, and I can't wait to find out. But I do know that if you kill the Lightning one second, you get the Buckler 
Defender Shield, which you can see we had this in the last episode. Actually, I don't believe we ended up showing it, but either way, it is a 15 agility requirement buckler with a 100% lightning block defense, and additionally, block strikes return lightning damage. So overall, a really good shield, especially if you meet the agility requirement. Unfortunately, I don't. So with that in mind, of course, now that we're on New Game Plus, we are going to kill the lightning guy first and then the fire afterwards. But you can see the Lost Brother of Fire's health is nice and low. The Lightning Brother's health was a little bit higher than that, but either way, we're just going to basically kite around. We're going to wait for him to jump up. That'll signal that the phases are now changing. They're both going to come out. We're going to pop Rage. Lightning comes down. We're going to go over, kill him. One big old hit. And before Fire can really even do anything with his other brother's abilities, we're going to run up and give him a good whack once he stops being a little bitch. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you take care of the Lost Brothers. So obviously, if you end up... <laughs> work the Lightning Brother down till he's like 10%, work the Fire Brother down till he's 10%, and then kill them both as I did right there. And you shouldn't have much trouble as long as you follow a strategy like that. Now, of course, let's also see what the fire one dropped. Fender as well. And I'm guessing it's... Yes, indeed, it is the exact same thing, except with a 100% fire block defense instead of lightning. And blocked strikes return fire damage. So, I guess depending on what shield you want. Honestly, I think the lightning one is probably worth more, considering you can get a... Uh, where is she at? The good old fiery withholder right here, which you just socket some runes in and you can hit 100% fire block defense. And I don't know any other shield that has 100% lightning resist, but either way, that is the Lost Brothers down. So thanks for tuning in. Hope you guys enjoyed another Lords of the Fallen boss strategy kill video, and we'll see you next time with the Judge.